Typically, the goal of machine learning is to generalize about a set of data. However, sometimes it's possible to recover information about specific training examples from a trained model. How can we provide more privacy and ensure our models capture general patterns rather than specific examples? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to AI Adventures, where we explore the art, science, and tools of machine learning. My name is Yufang Guo, and on this episode, we're going to take a look at TensorFlow Privacy, a new tool aimed at making it easy to train models with privacy. Last year, Google published a set of responsible AI practices focused around fairness, interpretability, privacy, and security. One of the recommended practices in the privacy section states, appropriately safeguard the privacy of ML models and recommends that we train ML models using techniques that establish mathematical guarantees for privacy. This is all well and good to recommend, but it does leave you wondering, how exactly do I do that? When you train a machine learning model, the goal should be to learn these general patterns, not facts about specific training examples. Otherwise, the model ends up memorizing a set of specific facts, which may not generalize well to previously unseen data, and may lead to possible exposure of the underlying data that was memorized. This is especially important when that data set corresponds to user actions or user attributes. Of course, it's not enough to say that your model probably doesn't memorize specific users' data. What we want is to use techniques that offer strong mathematical guarantees that models do not learn or remember any details about any specific user. TensorFlow Privacy does just this, all without needing any expertise in privacy or understanding its underlying mathematics. So what's happening under the hood? In order to ensure that no single example can impact that final trained model, TensorFlow Privacy introduces some modifications to the way that gradients are calculated during the training process. Gradients are a way of expressing which direction and how far a model should update its internal state, represented by weights and biases, or put another way, a large matrix of numbers. And typically, during a single training step, we use a batch of data, just some subset, to determine the gradient, and then apply it to update the value of the weights. So in other words, we look at some bit of the data, figure out, based on that, which direction and how far to shift our model, and then we go there. TensorFlow Privacy makes a few small but key tweaks to how that gradient is computed. If a single example is providing an outsized effect on that model's gradient, it may cause it to stick out, so to speak, and thus potentially be exposed in the trained model. One example of how TensorFlow Privacy addresses this is by averaging together multiple mini-gradient updates on a subset of the full batch. So each mini-gradient's value is clipped limiting its range of possible values, and so that restricts their individual impact. These mini gradients are then averaged together, and finally, we add some Gaussian random noise on top of this average. So by doing this, we're ensured that no individual example will be memorized by the model. In practice, you don't need to modify your model architecture or training procedures to take advantage of TensorFlow privacy. Instead, to train models, use a different optimizer provided by the TensorFlow privacy library. And we'll fill in some values to customize the optimizer's clipping, noise level, and number of mini batches to average together. Yes, we're going to introduce some more hyperparameters for you to tune, but hey, it's better than rewiring your entire model, and it's better than exposing your user's data. Now let's take a look at an example of what TensorFlow Privacy can achieve. In their blog post announcing the launch, the team highlighted an interesting situation with a language learning model, which is supposed to identify English sentences that look like they come from financial news. With the two models side by side, 
one trained using TensorFlow privacy, and one without. There are many sentences where both models agreed on, say, sentences that look like financial news, such as, South Korea and Japan continue to be profitable. But then there were the ones which the models disagreed on. These were notable because while the data set had marked these sentences as financial news, they definitely don't look like they belong in financial news. What's interesting here is that not only do these anomalous sentences account for most of the differences in accuracy between these two models, but this really illustrates the idea that going by metrics purely is not always the right decision. It also suggests that perhaps we can utilize TensorFlow privacy and similar tools to identify aspects of a data set which perhaps shouldn't even be there in the first place. TensorFlow privacy turns the science and math behind differential privacy into a tool that you can use. And while the tuning of hyperparameters does remain a bit of an art, the team has offered up some reasonable initial values to begin your exploration. For more details and examples, head on over to the blog post I've linked below in the description. Thanks for watching this episode of Cloud AI Adventures. And if you enjoyed it, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to get all the latest episodes right when they come out. For now, check out TensorFlow Privacy to make machine learning safer for your users.